Hi, this is Chris Hicks. It's August 25th, 2017. And I'm going to share with you in a minute a video of me trying to get some records from the CVB, the Claremont Convention and Visitors Bureau. But I wanted to give you a little background of the folly it is trying to get records. Um, I tried to get records a long time ago, and I was actually told that by Tracy Diarca that minutes had been copied for me, uh, but Jim Komodeka intercepted them, and I never got them. And uh, instead, I got a letter from a lawyer who the lawyer's name is Rob Mecklenburg of Frost, Brown, Todd, an expensive downtown law firm. And in that letter, he says, It is abundantly clear that the CVB is not required to comply with public rec records requests. It is, it is a private, nonprofit corporation, not a government entity. Therefore, we respectfully deny your request for documents of the CVB. I'm going to cover each of these things just very quickly before I show you the video. His representation that it's not a government entity, and also him pointing out it's a nonprofit corporation. Remember both of those things. Let's start with the not a government entity. Well, Here's the non-government entity. So the non-government entity has a board that consists of seven people, of which six of the seven people are elected officials or government employees. One person is not. That person is Chris Hamm. Uh, Chris Hamm is also the head of the Port Authority Board, and he's also on the Library Board. Um, so you can make your own judgments as to Chris Hamm's independence. I see no connection between Chris Hamm and the Trail on Tourism Industry, and somehow he's the head of our... Convention and Visitors Bureau Board in Claremont County. Remember, this group gets $700,000 a year in taxpayer revenue that flows through the CVB that they're spending. A 501c6, we're going to get to the nonprofit, and this is a 501c6. They are supposed to be an independent business league, an independent business league. Here you have the interesting thing of there's no independent businesses at all, uh, let alone any businesses on the board that have to do with travel and tourism. Um, so that's uh, this supposed, according to Rob Mecklenburg, uh, non-government board. It's not a government board. So, the other thing I said I was going to hit on is non-profit. Well, when the attorneys were applying and telling me this stuff, and I've requested records, I, I uh, would expect an attorney that's the attorney for the CVB would understand that they are a non-profit, and they have certain obligations as a non-profit. Uh, and I figured it out on my own that they are, since they are a 501c6 nonprofit, there's actually federal requirements in terms of their transparency. Uh, they file a tax return that's an IRS 990. Actually, if you read here, it says open to public inspection because it's a, it's a federal requirement that this be available to the public. And within that document, they actually state what other documents they make available to the public. And they said they make governing documents, conflict of interest policy, and financial statements available to the public upon request. So, I have to point out to Rob Mecklenburg, I'm a little confused. You're denying my records request when your federal tax return says that you provide these records to the public. Uh, it's, to me, I'd be highly embarrassed if I was in a uh, prestigious law firm and missed that it's uh, what my, the requirements of my client were as a nonprofit. However, this just leads to folly after folly. Um, so Rob Mecklenburg, in a, what I describe as a passive-aggressive attempt as a lawyer to try to avoid actually producing any documents, sends me this massive PDF file. In the PDF file, there's nothing new, but it does have a copy of the rules for how to file an IRS 990 return as a nonprofit. It's just pure waste in everybody's time. And the thing that bugs me is, Rob Mecklenburg and Frost, Brown and Todd are being paid with money that's going through the CVB that's coming from tax revenue. It's just wasting tax money on paying this guy whatever gets paid an hour to do this kind of nonsense. So, first I get bogus crap. It went further on Wednesday. I had told them the things that I wanted, which were the things that they had listed, that I was going to go to the CVB and request those items in the lobby. Well, according to the IRS code, certain things have to be available for public inspection in the lobby at all times of regular business hours, like the 990 return. Uh, so, I'm going to go to the lobby. I'm, I'm in this uh, commissioner's meeting when I'm told by Rob the office is going to be closed. So. We're now that nobody's going to be at the, at the office, so you can't go to the lobby to get anything. Well, they have published hours, but the funny thing is the CVB people are actually in the commissioner's meeting presenting while I'm getting emails saying the CVB is closed today. Okay, So it's just another wasting time, wasting energy, not providing the records that they've said that they uh, make available to the public. And it goes on even today. So I just today... I reminded Rob, before me again, he had given me everything I asked for, so I highlighted over here things he had not given me. Um, and uh, it's just more back and forth of just willful 
willful uh, denial of records that are required under their IRS filings. Again, a total waste of money. And I have no idea why somebody would do this unless they're trying to hide something. Why would you be so secretive and so fighting so hard to provide things that you stated in writing you provide to the public unless you're trying to hide something? It just or you're super incompetent. It just befuddles me as to, as to why that would occur. Why is it even more important now than ever is I want you to remember if you, or to hone in on if you have not already that within the CVB there is an executive committee and the executive committee is allowed to spend money without board approval of, of the overall CVB board. That's in their bylaws. The executive committee it consists of the chairman, vice chairman, secretary, and treasurer. That currently is Chris Hamm, Linda Fraley, David Ubel, and Chuck Tilbury. And down here, it's the disbursement requirements, and it says um, that they can, uh, disbursements can only take place when they have been approved and order, ordered by the executive committee, keyword, or the board. The executive committee or the board. So even more conflict of interest, there's an executive committee within the CVB that can spend money outside of CVB board monies without CVB knowledge, uh, board awareness, overall board awareness. So it's a government sham the way it's set up now, and these people have set them up in a way that they can spend money without having overall board approval even within the government sham. All right, so the, uh, it's also important to remember that our auditor, Linda Fraley, has been on this board for five years. She get, they get about $700,000 a year from her office. That's about $3.5 million of tax revenue from uh, uh, since 2012. It's a listed incompatibility of office on the Ohio AG site for the auditor in a county to be in any office that rece receives or pays out county funds. This is like unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable and it's been exposed for weeks and weeks now and uh, I guess in, they're not used to in Claremont County somebody actually asking questions about blatant conflicts of interest so it goes on and on. So with that let's get to the video it's just very quick. I just wanted to show you that I had gone to the CVB office on the 23rd after uh, the commissioner's meeting. I had already been told it was going to be closed, but I just confirmed it, so I just shot a little bit of video of me trying to check all the doors to see if anybody was there and to ring the doorbells.